Hey guys, Aaron Farmer here with My Sugar Free Journey and we uh, it's time for day 23 of our 28 day weight loss challenge. So many awesome stories are coming out of the 28 daily 28 day challenge so far. It has been a blast and we are approaching the end. This is the last week, so I'm looking forward to hearing how everything kind of uh, finishes up. So today we're going to look at what is a good fat. <clears throat> so we've looked at, you know, so far we've looked at a lot of the reasons to avoid carbs and grains in particular as it, pertain, as it pertains to grain, uh, brain health, but what, what should you eat? In today's lesson, I'm going to try to make the argument that the most important thing you can eat for optimum, optimum brain health is fat. Uh, after all, your brain is almost entirely fat, so let's make sure it has all the healthy fat that it needs uh, to work well your entire life. Fat has been the preferred human diet from the day we crawled out of the primordial ooze or were created by God uh, until the advent of agriculture about 10,000 years ago. For the better part of our history, we ate fat uh, and, and thrived as a people. The Framingham Heart Study is a long-term, ongoing cardiovascular cohort study on residents of the town of Framingham, Massachusetts. The study began in 1948 with 5,209 adult subjects from Framingham and is now on the third generation of participants. One of the many important findings that came out of that study was a clear association between the total amount of cholesterol and mental performance. Basically, the higher the cholesterol levels, the better their brains worked. In the fall of 2012, a report in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease uh, published research from the Mayo Clinic revealing that older people who fill their plates with carbohydrates have nearly four times the risk of developing mild cognitive impairment, or MCI, uh, generally considered a precursor to Alzheimer's disease. Signs of MCI include problems with memory, language, thinking, judgment. Uh, the, this particular study found that, that those whose diets were highest in healthy fats were 42% less likely to experience cognitive impairment, and people who had the highest intake of protein from healthy sources like chicken, meat, and uh, fish enjoyed a reduced risk of 21%. So uh, those are a lot of numbers that I just threw at you, but the basic idea is this. If you are elderly and you eat a lot of carbohydrates, your brain will not work as well as if you ate a lot of protein and or fat. Uh, there was a post-mortem study out of the Netherlands that found that Alzheimer's patients had significantly reduced amounts of fats, notably cholesterol and free, free fatty acids in their cerebral spinal fluid than did non-Alzheimer's patients. So these were done, you know, autopsies that were done on the deceased and patients with Alzheimer's disease had lower amounts of fats in their cerebral spinal, uh, spinal fluid. In 2007, the journal Neurology <clears throat> published a study that looked at more than 8,000 participants who were 65 years or older and had totally normal brain functions. The study followed them for up to four years, which, during which some 280 people developed a form of dementia, most, mostly Alzheimer's. The research aimed to identify patterns in their dietary habits, honing in on their consumption of fish, which contains lots of brain and heart healthy omega-3 fats. For people who never consumed fish, the risk of dementia and Alzheimer's disease during the four-year follow-up period was increased by 37%. In those individuals who consume fish on a daily basis, risk for these diseases was reduced by 44%. Regular users of butter had no significant change in their risk for dementia or Alzheimer's, but people who regularly consumed omega-3 rich oils such as olive oil, flaxseed oil, or walnut oil were 60% less likely to develop dementia than those who did not regularly consume such oils. The research also found that uh, people who regularly ate omega-6 rich oils, and omega-6 rich oils are the, uh, the, the oils that are typically found in the standard American diet, but not omega-3 rich oils or fish were twice as likely to develop dementia as people who didn't eat omega-6 rich oils. So the takeaway from this is having more omega-3 oils in your, uh, in your uh, diet uh, translates into better brain health than if you have a high amount of omega-6 oils. So omega-3 oils, again, olive oil, walnut oil, um, flaxseed oil, but mostly fish. If, if, you want, if you want your brain, we've always thought of uh, fish as brain food, uh, and, and it is. The more science that comes out, the more that we know that eating fish is good for your brain. If you want to avoid Alzheimer's, eat fish. Uh, try to make it, you know, a, uh, a weekly thing. I know a lot of people eat fish on Fridays. That's probably a good thing. That's probably something that, that you should uh, look into. What are omega-6 fatty acids in? Manufactured oils like canola oil, sunflower oil, uh, 
corn oil, any, any oil with the word seed in it. So grapeseed oil, rapeseed oil, uh, or any kind of vegetable oil or corn oil. Basically, you know, vegetables and seeds don't have oil. You have to, you have to torture corn uh, under high amounts of pressure and heat, and the heat in order for you to be able to get oil out of corn or seeds or any of these other uh, any of these other oils. But it's not good. It's just not. Uh, it's not good for your body. Your, your body wasn't really uh, built to process corn oil because you know the corn oil didn't exist in our diet before we decided to come up with one. And again, the reason why corn oil exists and the reason why these vegetable oils exist and these canola oils exist is because we were desperate to try to feed people low cholesterol food because we thought at the time that cholesterol was the source of all these dietary evils. Not true. You want your cholesterol to be high. Uh, you want your HDL to be high, you want your LDL to be high. The, only, high, the only type of cholesterol that you don't want is the VLDL, the very low density lipoproteins, and those aren't caused by you know the foods that you would think at all, those are caused by carbs and sugar. So avoid the carbs, avoid the sugar, and your cholesterol will work like it's supposed to. Uh, also oils that are high in omega-3s, which is the good uh, fat, are olive oil, walnut oil, fish oil, flaxseed oils. You can also get omega-3s in animals that have been grass-fed or ocean-caught, so grass-fed beef, uh, pasture-raised chickens, uh, um, ocean-caught uh, uh, fish, those are all going to be higher than omega-3s. Unfortunately, most of the meat that we consume nowadays is, has been farm-raised. Uh, and, and raised on soy and grain fed, which lowers omega-3s and raises omega-6s. So it's, it's healthier to eat grass-fed beef, but grass-fed beef is expensive. So you can afford it, absolutely eat grass-fed beef. If you can't afford it, then, you know, do the best with what you can. And uh, if you have to shop at, I say you have to shop at Walmart, if, if, you, if you shop at Walmart for your meat, you're not gonna be able to find grass-fed beef, and that's okay. Just, just do the best that you can. Uh, eating a diet high in fats, even if the high, if, even if the fats have more omega sixes in them than omega threes, is still healthier than a diet high in uh, carbs and sugar. In a recent report uh, published by the National Institutes of Health, researchers compared memory function in elderly individuals to cholesterol levels. They found that the people who did not suffer from dementia had a much better memory function if they had higher levels of cholesterol. The conclusion of the, of the report crisply stated, high cholesterol is associated with better memory function. In the discussion that followed, uh, the researchers indicated, quote, it is possible that individuals who survived beyond the age 85, especially those with high cholesterol, may be more robust. Uh, high cholesterol is good. Another recent studies have uh, other recent studies have shown that people with the lowest amount of LDL, what, what we consider to be bad cholesterol, are at uh, are at the greatest <laughs> are at the greatest risk of developing Parkinson's syndrome. So if you work all you know hard and hard hard to lower your LDL because that's what your doctor uh, said you know says to do, you're actually increasing your uh, your risk of Parkinson's and a few other diseases. We we'll talk about those in the coming days. While we once thought that high LDL levels were detrimental to our health, what we are now discovering is that it is not the LDL particles that cause damage, but when LDL particles are oxidized by high sugar levels in the bloodstream. Oxidized LDL can't do its job, which is to deliver important amino acids to individual neurons to help repair the, any damage to the, new, to the neuron. Uh, keep you, if you keep your blood sugar high and your LDL levels low, you're going to increase your risk of chronic brain disease in the long term. So get the sugar and the carbs out of your diet and uh, raise your LDL as, as, high as, as high as you want. It's not going to hurt you. Um, and again, just wanted to repeat that I am not a doctor. If you're under a doctor's care for cholesterol, please you know, do what the doctor says, yada, yada, yada. But I, I can tell you from, uh, from what I've read and what I've learned over these last couple of years, I would never do anything to lower my cholesterol. That's just my personal thing. Another study has shown that cholesterol levels are a powerful predictive factor in patients with ALS, which is uh, Lou Gehrig's disease. The higher the total cholesterol, the longer the patient survives. And you know, I could go on here uh, all day long, but but today's lesson in a nutshell is this: eat fat. Your fat is what keeps your brain working like it should, and high cholesterol is something that you want, not something that you should try to avoid. So eat that fat, get your cholesterol levels high, and you're going to enjoy. Uh, you're going to improve your risk of having a high-functioning brain e even into old age. So that's our lesson for tonight. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Make sure you never miss a video. Love you guys. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.